Hi everyone, welcome to the community classroom. This is our continuing discussion related to peculiar people. We are going to be addressing the Y Hapla group, the A Y Hapla group. Uh, so we are going to be addressing the scientific contention that the oldest male DNA originated from a man who would be identified as an indigenous American man uh, found in the Americas, specifically in the United States of America, that particular land space in South Carolina. So we're going to address this scientific issue and the implications of this issue. Now we've discussed it before, but we're going to look at it in a more nuanced way in this particular discussion. Now, one thing that is noteworthy about the history and the narrative of the American Indian is that they have been identified historically as the red man. Now, when you look at Genesis and you look at this understanding of red man, meaning ruddy, uh, what it is indicating is the color that is the color of earth, the color of the soil. And so that is the, the color that is indicated with respect to uh, ruddiness in the Bible and also with respect to this ruddiness that has been described by historians related to uh, the American Indian male. Now we're going to continue this discussion related to some science that we've seen before. Now this particular article addresses the finding of some geneticists related to the oldest male DNA found on the planet. And so the indication is that the father of all men is 340,000 years old. Now, people can debate whether or not humans have actually been on this planet, uh, this earth space that long, uh, but this is what is being asserted. That's not the most important issue. The time frame is not the most important issue. The most important issue is that this is the oldest DNA. And this DNA for men was found in a person named Albert Perry. Now it's unclear as to whether that's the person's actual name. It's almost like the HeLa cells uh, for Henrietta Lacks. And so it's unclear if this is the actual name, but this is the name that is being used is Albert Perry. This individual was identified as an African American who lived in South Carolina. Now what some individuals will offer is that uh, this individual ended up in South Carolina by way of the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, there is no clear indication that that is the case. And normally, according to science, if you're going to go with the uh, standard narrative, wherever you find something is where you assume it came from. So they do that with the oldest female. They do that when they find bones. They do this when they find old DNA. And so we're going to keep it consistent based upon the way the science has been running. So we're not going to extrapolate, come up with any migration, back migration theories. We're not going to do that. We're going to deal with the fact that the DNA was found uh, in someone in South Carolina. And we're going to stick with that because you also have those immortal cells coming out of that East Coast also. So in a similar area. Uh, so this is what we are dealing with here. And there are lots of implications to this because South Carolina is also an area that is heavy with individuals who understand themselves uh, as indigenous people. Now, of course, South Carolina is also the place where you had a lot of migration coming in in terms of colonizers. And so you have some of that DNA also. So we're not talking about that R Hapla group. We're not talking about E1B1. We are talking about A. Okay, so let's get to the meat of this article. And this article is a replication of other findings. And so this is a discussion that has been carried on. We've talked about some of the other literature on this. We're just going to look at this because it really simplifies it so that you can see it very clearly. And so it indicates that Albert Perry carried a secret in his DNA and that his DNA was so distinctive that it revealed new information about the entire species, the origin of the species, and who is understood as the common male ancestor for that patrilineal heritage. And so what is understood with this, just as when you're talking about Eve, when you're talking about mitochondrial Eve, 
is that all men that are on the planet right now gain their Y chromosome from this common male ancestor known as the genetic Adam. Now, what was believed before was that uh, the this particular haplogroup was about 60,000 to 140,000 years old. But there was some oddity about Perry's particular genetic makeup. And it said that uh, all men, you know, basically had some uh, more recent uh, DNA, the 60 to 140,000 years, everyone except Perry. So Perry's DNA was even older than that and did not actually fit very neatly on the uh, family tree in terms of chromosomes. And so what was also noted was that his, his DNA, his chromosome, did not look like anyone else in terms of this earth. And so it's very unique and indicative of the first, the origin, the indigenous. Uh, and it was found here in America, the United States of America, that particular land space. So this is something important to keep in mind when thinking about this. Now let's address some important issues here. If it is the case that the oldest male DNA was found in the United States of America, that particular land space, uh, it is imperative that we understand that this DNA is some very important DNA for the entire planet. And this is not to be misunderstood or dismissed. Uh, we understand that all of the haplogroups are important. They are all parts of branches uh, coming off of that uh, oldest DNA. So you've got the R's, you've got the E's, you've got the J's, the G's, you've got all of these letters in the alphabet. However, this A haplogroup is important for the entire species. And because of that, and because it is embedded in apparently a group of people, and you can't really identify who they are by people just walking down the street, uh, but because it is embedded in a group of people uh, who have collectively been identified uh, as problematic, uh, what you have here is an endangered species without the species even knowing that it is endangered. Because this is like looking for the baby Moses, baby Jesus, <laughs> little baby Simba. Uh, so this is the dynamic that we are dealing with. And so this is some very vulnerable DNA, but very, of course, very hardy DNA because it is the foundation of all of the males on the planet. Um, but it is vulnerable because it is embedded in what would be considered um, an endangered species on the planet. And we are talking about those males who are American Indian males or what some call African American males. Um, but we are talking about those indigenous American males. Now, why this is also important is because of the dynamic that took place when the colonizers came over uh, into the Americas and the annihilation of the indigenous males on that East Coast in particular. And so you had those males coming from Europe. You had those males coming from Africa. You had uh, these quote unquote mound builders um, coming in and getting rid of the original males. It's unclear how many of the original males they got rid of, but the original males uh, were pretty much decimated and then replaced uh, with colonizer DNA. So these would be the uh, the descendant DNA versus the original DNA. So the DNA that was given by the creator, so the father DNA, uh, so that DNA has been displaced, misplaced, and eradicated uh, to a great degree. So it is important to keep this in mind when thinking about the genetic history, the biological makeup, of males who are considered African-American male, those males who are considered indigenous American males, those males who are considered American Indian, original men 
of the land. Now, this is not to give someone some big head um, because it's very clear that uh, this DNA is perhaps a little bit more rare than it should be. Uh, so you have all of these uh, descendant lines, but you don't have the um, proliferation of this particular DNA. And so this is the most foundational DNA. This is the most foundational genetic makeup. It is the origin, the genesis, the indigenous. Uh, and that needs to be kept in mind. It needs to be respected because we are talking about a major ancestral dynamic here. And it is very important that that particular ancestral line be maintained, preserved, and protected. And so with respect to that, uh, this opens up a space for quite a bit of communication. Uh, this issue also might be a part of the reason why you have medical dynamics uh, in the uh, communities, in the American Indian communities, in the indigenous communities, in the native born communities. You might have medical dynamics that impact them uh, in ways that don't impact the rest of the earth. And so their systems may be a little bit more sensitive um, to things because you have fewer mutations going on with this particular genetic line. And so this needs to be kept in mind. And so when you have researchers who are looking at these unusual experiences that are going on with respect to a number of uh, medical dynamics, when they are looking at these things, they need to keep in mind uh, what they are looking at in terms of genetic and ancestral heritage. And so you may have some uniqueness going on in terms of experience because you are looking at someone who is genetically unique or distinct uh, from other groups of people and so therefore they may be having a very different experience of the same dynamic. And so this again needs to be kept in mind and people need to be mindful of this, uh, not only for themselves, uh, but for understanding some of the information that they are receiving about who they are and the implications of who they are. So just keep this in mind because we are talking about an endangered species. And so I'm going to leave you with some food for thought. And this isn't just food for thought for you to sit and think about it. It's food for thought for you to have conversations about this. Uh, this is a very important issue, this idea of Adam in America. And it's important to think about the implications. This is particularly important because there are some religions that uh, believe that Eden or the birthplace of humanity is actually in America. So this is also something to keep in mind because you do have some genetic dynamics that are a bit unusual with the HeLa cells, the immortal cells, and here you have these atom uh, dynamics. And so these are important things to keep in mind as you are trying to understand what is going on in the world, what's going on in your own life uh, and history. And so sometimes history is not what it has been presented as, and you need to also keep that in mind. So the question is, Adam in America, what are the implications? <laughs>